Hello again and welcome to lesson four of the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. As you can see, we've completed our top row and we're now moving on to the middle row of the quilt, which is our garden inspired row. This week, we're going to continue on with applique and we're going to do some strip piecing. I'm going to give you my tips and tricks for doing strip piecing and at the end of the lesson um, I'll also talk a little bit about other ways that you can use strip piecing and the other thing we're going to do today is we're going to um, have some optional free motion design lines so I'm going to show you how, you how you can do some sketchy lines on your leaves there and also add um, a little bit more interest onto the butterflies there. So hope you enjoy this lesson. So to get started print out the pattern and just like we've done in the weeks before, trace the design onto your background fabric, apply your applique shapes. So we're going to pull all of the pieces on except for our tulip pieces. And they're the ones we're going to do with the strip piecing. To do the strip piecing, choose five different fabrics. We're using ones, um, you know, we've got a yellow running through from our green, blue, purple and pink. But you can choose any fabrics that you want to. And then just give them a press ready for cutting. So we're going to need to cut strips that are one and a quarter inches wide by 20 and a half inches long. So that's about half the width of your fabric. So if you're cutting your strips from a fat quarter, here's a fat quarter here and you'll see that you've probably cut some pieces out here and there, but you should have one long edge. So that long edge is going to be running across the fabric, so not down the same direction um, as the selvage. So basically to cut the strip from a fat quarter, what I would do to make it really easy, I would actually fold that fat quarter in half. So I would grab onto the selvage edge and then I'll fold that over to the cut edge. And then line up a line on your cutting mat. So the folded edge is going onto one of our lines there. And then we're going to trim off the edge just to make sure that it's nice and straight. So with our strip piecing, um, I'm going to show you how to get it as accurate as possible. So we're just going to trim off, um, you can trim that off either by lining up a line at the top and at the bottom there, or you can just put a line, run a line along the folded edge. So there's our first cut there. Then what we're going to do, and remember um, I'm, I always show things for right-handed people, but if you're left-handed just reverse what I'm doing. I'm now going to transfer that straight edge over to the left side. and I'm going to trim, I'm going to cut a strip that is an inch and a quarter. So like I mentioned once before, if your cutting mat does have the quarter inch increments, you can use that, but my one doesn't. So that's why I like to flip over and I cut from the left hand side. So there's my inch and a quarter. You have to make sure that it's um, there's a line which is nice and straight on the fold. And then I'm cutting across like that. So there is one strip, I do have the selvage on that one at the moment, and I am going to cut that back to my 20 and a half inches. And when I sew these, you'll see why I am going to cut them all to the same length. Now, if you wanted to cut your strips from 25 centimeter or 10 inch pieces, I'm going to show you how I would do that. So here's one of my 25 centimeter pieces or 10 inch piece. Um, you'll see I've done a little bit of cutting one from one side there. But what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to leave it folded just like it would be when it comes off the bolt. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to trim off one edge. So whilst it's folded, I'm trimming all the way across. And my fabric here is, is quite a wide one. So I'm just lining it up on the board, just making sure it's nice and straight. So same thing again, I'm lining up a line on the folded edge there. And one other thing I like to say to people is, when it comes to trimming the edge, the rule is, if you're right-handed, trim off the right-hand side first of all. If you're left-handed, you're going to trim off the left-hand side. So we're trimming off right-hand side first, like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, transfer the straight edge over to the left side. Like this. And I'm going to open it out this time because there's no point in... Um, cutting a whole strip because we don't need that we only need half a strip and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just first of all um, line it up so I'm going to make that 21 because we want 20 and a half inches so I'm just cutting it a little bit longer to begin with there's my inch and a quarter and I'm going to just cut that 
when I get to the end I'm just going to cut across like that and there's my strip and now I'm going to trim it to the length of 20 and a half inches and to do that I thought what I might do is work on two strips together at once you might want to even work on the whole five you can do that if you like just layer them all on top of each other like that line them up so they're nice and straight That, and then I'm just going to trim off one edge and to trim off one edge you're just making sure you've got a line running along the edge of your fabric there and trimming that little bit off like that and then I'm going to turn that around and flip it around so I've got my straight edge on the left hand side making sure it's running straight on a line on my board and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to locate the 20 and a half inches on my trimmed edge here, and there's my 20 and a half, and then I'm just going to trim that edge there like that. So there's two strips, and I've already cut my other strips, and you can see they're all the same length. So this is one of the secrets I find to strip piecing, and I am going to talk a little bit later on about what uh, some other different things that you can do with strip piecing, but I do find if you get them all to the same length, if you're going to have more success and you're not going to get a lot of um, stretching or it's not going to bend out like a banana shape. So next thing we do, we go to the sewing machine to sew them. Okay, so at the sewing machine, I've got my sewing machine set up with a neutral coloured thread. So I'm just using a, a light grey rosant coloured thread. I've got a size 70 universal needle on and I've set my stitch length to a length of two. So you want it to be a little bit smaller so that um, the pieces aren't going to come undone easily. I've also got a quarter inch foot on. Now, if you don't have a quarter inch foot, what you need to do is, with your standard foot, if you can move your needle position over um, to the right, you want to be able to have the distance from the edge of the foot to the needle being a quarter of an inch, but you want it to be a little bit smaller. So the secret to sewing these strips together and so that they come up the size that we want is to sew with a scant quarter inch. So that's just a fraction less than a quarter of an inch. And the reason for that is that when you sew two pieces together and you press the seam in one direction, what happens is that actually takes up a little bit of um, area. So that's why we like to sew with a smaller seam allowance. So um, what I'm going to do here, if you do have a quarter inch foot, um, and you can see it's got normally has a little hole in the middle of it there and my little trick for this is what I do is I move my needle position over to just one position and to move your needle position on most machines all you're going to do is you'll have your machine set up on a straight stitch I've got my length down to two but I'm actually going to um, move my needle position just once to the right just there like that I actually went one one way and I went back to the middle but it's just one to the right um, and I was just saying most people have a machine with the width which moves the needle so when your machine is set up on straight stitch you move the width and then that's what changes the needle position but you will just have to check your handbook on that and also make sure once you have moved your needle position once just make sure that the needle is not hitting the edge of the foot mine isn't so that's just moved it over a fraction there okay so next thing is sewing the strips together I've got them laid out in the order that I want and we're going to take our first two strips and we're going to put them right sides together like that and making sure that they're nice and level at the top edge and level on the side edges some quarter inch feet will have a guide on the edge of it like my one here if yours doesn't it's just a matter about of resting the edge of the foot on the edge of the fabric and we're going to start sewing. So I'm just holding my threads behind when we start sewing. Um, now the next thing is we're only sewing short strips together but if you had full length strips that were the width of the fabric it's not a bad idea to pin them together to make sure they are the same length but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my strips like this and I'm going to make sure that they're level at this end here and then I'm just going to sew. <coughs> Now say for instance as you were sewing the edges 
the ends weren't lining up then what you would do is you would make them line up and then it's just a matter of just easing it through as you sew. Okay, if you've ever sewn strips together and they are not level at the end and one is stretching, that's when you're going to get that curve. It's going to end up like that banana shape with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to press our fabrics towards the darker colour. Um, so basically here you'll see like I've got my yellow and green which is sort of lighter than these ones. So I'm going to keep continue pressing them towards the pink colour. So all I'm doing is, before I go on to my next one, you can either get up at the iron and press it, but gently press it. But I'm just going to give that a bit of a finger crease there, pressing the seam towards the pink. Just continue sewing all of your strips together and make sure that each time you sew a strip, you press. So pressing as we go. So here's our strips sewn together. You can see we've pressed the seam all in the one direction. And when you're pressing, also make sure that you get any little creases out there. We don't want to press creases in. But as you can see, we've got a nice strip sewn together here. We don't have any bending in it and everything is the same size. So now the next step from there is to trace the tulip onto fusible web. So the tulip shape, we're gonna trace that three times. If you've got enough fusible web, if you can trace that in a row, that's going to be quite handy. Um, don't have much of a gap in between them, only about an eighth of an inch. And the reason for that is that with our tulips, we're actually going to repeat them again in block six, and we're going to use this same strip of fabric. So from this strip piece fabric here, we actually want to be able to get six tulips in total. So just showing here, I'm cutting roughly around the edge here. That. and then we're going to just using the wrong side here we're going to iron our tulip so the fusible web the rough side onto the wrong side of our strips like that and make sure that they're all kind of sitting in a row there you're going to have probably a little bit of space at the bottom and at the top so just making sure that they're centered and the other thing I want you to double check too is just making sure if you folded that piece in half are you going to have enough Okay, so I can see that I've got enough of my um, strip piece section here to be able to fit another three tulips. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to iron the rough side of the fusible web onto the wrong side, making sure that I've got the same amount at the top and at the bottom there. So that's going to fuse on. And then we're going to cut the tulips out. Make sure you decide which colour you want to be the top of the tulip and which colour you want to be the bottom of the tulip. We've chosen to have the green and the yellow at the bottom edge. So we're just cutting that out. There we are. So there's our tulip piece there. And to remove the paper backing, all we need to do is if we just grab a pin, score the back edge like that, and then we can just remove the paper. We've removed the paper backing and now it's time to iron them onto our backing square or our background square. These are ones that we prepared earlier. We're going with our pastel ones on this block here and you'll see they'll just go in position there. We're going to cover the bottom of the stem. So it's a good idea to do all of your other stitching first or your applique stitching and then pop these ones on. Iron them in place and then stitch around the edge of those. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of stitching to do. So I'm going to head to the sewing machine, get my stitching done, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the quilting.
I'm absolutely loving this block, it's so pretty. I've done my zigzag stitching around the edge of all the shapes. Um, you can, as you know, do your zigzag or be doing the blanket stitch around the edge. And my tulips are on and I've just done a little zigzag around the edge using a peach coloured thread. I found that that tied in with um, my rainbow colours there. Don't forget if you're doing your blanket stitch, that's what you would be doing. I've got my layers together now ready for quilting. So I've got my back, my batting and my top layer. I've already started my quilting, I've done my outline quilting, so that's where I'm using my background coloured thread and I'm stitching really close to the edge of all of the applique shapes and I've also started doing my echo quilting, so stitching a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the shapes. So the thing I'm going to show you now is how to add some design lines in using um, free motion work but you can also do this with your walking foot they're just straight stitches and if you are doing it free motion it's just like what I showed you in last week's video where we were just sewing up and down okay so let's get started here to do my design lines I'm using a green variegated thread only because I had it um, in my stash at home um, it's a wonder feel thread and um, and I tried it out and it looks quite nice so once again I've got my free motion foot on, I've dropped my feed dogs and I'm using my size 80 quilting needle. So your quilting needles have a nice sharp point. Now I would practice doing this first because you've got the layer of your applique there, you've got the fusible web and then you've got your quilt sandwich there. So your needle really does have to work hard to get through all of the layers. So practice this first to make sure that your machine does like it first of all. To start sewing, I'm going to drop my foot and then I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top and that's just by putting the needle all the way down and all the way back up again. I'm going to use tweezers to pull my thread, so I've got thread cutters on my machine that always leave a, a short thread, so tweezers make it really easy for me to get that. And then needle down again, hanging onto my two threads and I just want to do a couple of stitches just to catch the threads there like that. So I've done that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut those threads off. Nice and close there. And then I'm making my little hand frame and we're going to do three rows. So I'm going to come forwards and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do one out to the side, back again and another one out to the side and then just finishing off with some stitches close together. There's our little design line there. Now if you did want to do this with your walking foot it would just be a matter of straight stitching up, back and then out to the side and then out to the other side again and then finishing your thread off and cutting the threads nice and close. Okay so I'm just going to change my thread now. I've got a pink that I'm going to put on and we're going to have a little bit of a play with this small butterfly here. I've got my pink thread on and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do some extra design lines on my butterfly.
so just some extra design lines there you may have noticed that I didn't stop and start with every um, wing there I wanted to keep that just nice and continuous and flowing around um, as I said that is optional you could do that with your walking foot and just the same thing stitching around there like that Okay, so I've got a little bit more stitching to do on this. I've got some more echo quilting and some more free motion work to do on it. Um, once I've done this, it's going to be the same thing. I'll just mark little crosses where I feel that there's blank spaces and I'll stitch my twinkling stars. And um, I'll have this all stitched up so that you'll see this looking beautiful on the pattern cover so that you'll be able to follow that. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what you can do with um, strip piecing. So strip piecing is a basic patchwork and quilting technique. A lot of your experienced quilters have probably made lots of quilts using strip piecing. For our newbies out there, it is a, a really fun, easy technique and it's probably something that you'll use a lot in your quilting journey. This is the Pretty Birds quilt here. This is a quilt I designed quite a few years ago. And what I've got here are some strip pieces that I sewed together. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six strips sewn together. They started off as two inch strips. By the time I sewed them with a quarter inch seam, they ended up at an inch and a half. And it was one big long strip and then I used a, um, a ruler, a 60 degree triangle ruler to cut those strips. And then I also just cut, that's a full fabric there. Um, using the 60 degree triangle ruler and then they were just joined together in a long row So I'm just going to come over to the cutting mat to show you if you did have um, Some strips that you wanted to make into a quilt. It was basically just as simple as um, This is my 60 degree triangle here and all I did was just line up there like that so with our pieces that we sewed together by the time they they sewed together they would have been about hopefully four and a quarter inches. Sometimes they might be a little bit smaller, so that's okay. But I would then cut this using the four and a quarter inch on my line on my ruler, and then I would just rotary cut that with the ruler there. And then you can join them together. But another really easy way to use strip piecing is to just make a, um, a quilt from squares of strip piecing. So what I would do with this one here, just showing you down here, is that, I'm going to square off my edge there first of all and I'm going to cut squares that are four and a quarter inches wide. So just uh, mention again these are our strips that we did um, and once they're joined together they should measure about four and a quarter inches. If they measured a little bit less I would actually cut my square to the size that they are. So here I've got my four squares cut out um, and just to show you there's lots of things that you can do. You can sew them into a block, um, you can arrange them so that um, you can have a square, I'm using my darker pink one there to make um, a cross like that. Or you can just simply sew them into a row where you've got um, some going across and your next one going down um, and just alternating between across and down. So another little fun technique that, um, that you can have a play with. So I'm just going to go on and continue quilting my block now and I hope that you all enjoyed lesson four. Bye now.